Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanaliza Dawn, or to the Zero K. Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the September 2019 2v2 tournament. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we are into the tiebreakers. Should have written that down properly. On red comment. So the first match is going to be the third place tiebreaker, is going to be between 400 and Firepluck against Hokumoko and Kingstad, who we haven't had a chance to actually see this tournament yet. Hokumoko Kingstad going for rovers and tanks. Well, Rovers and Cookies are found on Fireplug's choice. And it looks like Fireplug going very quickly for Four Scorch. Is this Four Scorch? Yeah, this is Four Scorcher. Or Eight Scorcher, I guess. Going for a Scorcher rush while Hokumoko and King's Dead kind of playing it normal. Building the Kodachi, getting up a Fencer, getting up a Dart, just not being too tricky overall. Just just getting it, you know, your normal Force while at the same time, Eight Scorchers. Like, Four Scorchers per Commander take out both Commanders immediately. Oof, it might be sp No, it's not being spotted. The Scorchers are not spotted. I don't know what what King's Dad and Hokumoko are thinking. They, they're clearly thinking... There's got to be something. They must know something is up. Only five Scorchers able to go with this might not work. This is a little bit tricky because the Scorchers are going to have to... Like, four Scorchers is enough to kill a commander. Or used to be, actually. The commander laser change. I think that needs four scorches and a dart. So this is a little bit tricky. It's theoretically possible for the scorches to be able to win, but it's going to come down to really good micro, and I'm not really sure that's going to work. Hokumoko's commander, however, is out of position. Actually, Hokumoko and Kingstad commanders, they're both kind of out of position. They have no defenses whatsoever. Scorches are going to be starting to come in here. There are some fences, however, already in place, along with a couple lotuses. So I don't see a whole lot of hope for the Scorchers. But they could get rid of a few units here and there. I mean, five Scorchers are still a lot of Scorchers. The Welder coming on top of that to help foul. And unfortunately, ah, that, there it is. The Scorchers being torn to pieces. Firepluck did not manage to get that and throws in the towel already. It's going to be a short game. I mean, a bit of a cheese on the tiebreaker. But Hokumoko and Kingstad just had a solid setup already with their composition. I mean, fencers, their command was already set up. It's kind of hard to cheese with Scorchers anyway. So, yeah, unfortunately, not a great starting point. Not to mention the Lotuses, too. So the counterattack coming in here should be able to tear everything to pieces. Okay, Pont is putting on the chat. It's too early to GG. Yeah, I would I would agree, but this is Firepluck we're talking about here. And actually, the Western team has an advantage economically. But this is Firepluck we're talking about here. They have a tendency to try a thing and then throw in the towel. Like, try something, try some cheese strat. doesn't work. They surrender, and their teammate has to pick up the slack. Now, granted, Firepluck has gotten a lot better at not doing that, at actually committing to games even as things fall apart. But, or as their initial strategy falls apart. But, yeah, that's been a bit of a problem for them. And it looks like that is... Actually, might be a problem. Oh, never mind. Well, okay, now they're definitely throwing in the towel. And actually, to be fair, that Koda, the Kodachi is doing a pretty good job. So, yeah, 400, 400 and Fireplug throws in the towel. So, third place ends up going... Ended up going over to Hokomoko and Kingstead. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see a lot of them. But what we did see was them just surviving a cheese strat, no problem. And then going forward. So yeah, good job, you two. So anyway, we're going to be having the next match. Not No break, just the next match. We're going to be watching the other tiebreaker, which is going to be a little bit longer. Golden and Ezeride versus Steel Blue and Ultra Godzilla. Which will be a less, well, hopefully less lopsided game. I mean, it wasn't super lopsided. It just was that, you know, the cheese strat didn't work, and then there wasn't a whole lot of follow-up from Firepluck and... And 400. So this is the first place tiebreaker we're watching now. It's going to be, like I said, Golden Ride versus Steel Blue and Ultra... No, was it Steel Blue and Ultra Godzilla? Yeah, I believe it was. Ah, I'm using all my production secrets. Alright, anyway. So, again, we're on Red Comet. Golda going for tanks. Izarod going for shields. Oh, wow. Shields in the cheese spot, too. I mean, this is the normal distribution. Ultra Godzilla going for rovers and tanks coming out from Steel Blue. 
But it looks like Izzerad wants to get some shields in and very quickly come in along an unexpected angle along the south side of the map. So right now the north side is completely un unclaimed. This is risky on the part of Gul'dan and Izzerad, but if they're able to get in a good harassment setup already off the bat, it might actually work for them. I mean, considering shield bots have a slower move speed than vehicles, that is going to work. Like, this, this positioning makes sense. Because they're going to expect that one of their opponents is starting in the southwest. Correctly, as it turns out. But the problem is it's harder to build out from here because you are stuck in a corner without a whole lot of metal extractors around. And now the north side is completely unclaimed. It's going to be a lot easier for the western team to build up on the northwest side. It's a lot easier to build up this north side. Gold is going to be the only one easily able to send forces in to defend in the north side. So that's going to be risky. It might work out, but it is going to be a bit risky. I'm actually not quite sure what... Okay, so they're coming in here, though. Looks like Steel Blue... Trying to find some weak point, because they have Dart Scorcher coming in. Actually, Dart Scorcher going to be intercepting the bandits, so going to stop that initial attempt at raiding. And I... Th oh, no, no. They're seeing this other bandit here. They should actually know what's going on. Same time, though... Oof. Kodachi coming in here. Kodachi along with Scorcher. Tearing apart a lot of Gold's base. This is not starting out well for the Eastern team. I mean, again, they're doing okay, but this is kind of the risky bit I was talking about. There's not a whole lot Ezerite can do to actually help defend. And Ezerite pulling back, getting their bandits back in. You're not going for that raid. But they have been spotted. And now at this point, because they've been spotted, Western team knows the north side is completely open. Like Steel Blue knows they can just expand. They don't have to worry about anything. They don't have to worry too much about any defenses they just defend a little bit lightly but otherwise if their commanders there they're fine there aren't going to be forces coming in from the northeast side of the map tearing apart that northwest expansion so it's very open now granted that does mean we're going to be seeing ultra godzilla have to defend a little bit more vigilantly over to the south side of the map but hey that north side is totally open and steel blue is already going for it so this is going to work out really well for steel blue and ultra godzilla Assuming they're able to hold on to the economic advantage. I mean, they need to make sure they have the energy. They need to make sure they have the production capacity. Not sure what's up with this one. Okay, there we go. But yeah, that needs to be built up. Needs to be available. Because otherwise, Ultra Godzilla and Steel Blue are going to fall behind. I mean, this is Golda we're talking about here. They're up against. So it's important to be careful. It's important to play it safe. The Weezerite's commander. Nice jump in there. Still managing pretty good... I have pretty good defense against that Blitz. That's Blitz and the Scorcher is completely destroyed. That's 200 metal. Four basically free. I think they lost two or three bandits in the process, but that's not a huge deal. Net gain, all things considered. But again, it's going to come down to what happens on the north side of the map. Golda is very rapidly expanding there as well, but it is risky. As we're seeing right now, we're already seeing the Scorcher darts combos coming in here from the Western team to try to take out that expansion on... On the other hand, though, we do have a Blitz coming in for defense. It's not going to be... That's not going to be a hard defense, actually. I mean, it's more a question of whether or not any weak points are found. Like, what is going to happen? Are they going to be finding weak points? Are they going to be able to get in and start actually tearing apart some of the expansions that have been built up by Golda? That is not super clear. What is clear, however, is that the territory control is actually managing to split roughly in half, and Golda is actually expanding quite quickly, despite the fact that the north side is a little bit harder to defend for them. It's still expanding quickly. We aren't seeing Ultra Godzilla go in and expand as much. And I kind of wish we did. I also kind of wish we had some caretakers coming in here. Because the heavy tank factory, or the tank factory, really needs it. Especially for building Minotaurs. Like, why are there no caretakers here? I don't understand what the Western team is doing. I mean, they also need a lot of metal, a lot of solar collectors. They need a lot of power plants. But, yeah, get caretakers up. That's a lot of excess coming from the Western team. The Eastern team is actually doing much better just because of the fact that they have the power plants being built up, they're not worried as so much about economy because they're actually building at a reasonably good clip for the amount of energy that they're producing. Caretakers finally are being built, but again, also the e-stalling does not help. That's finally being fixed, so the Western team finally able to start getting some energy up, finally starting able to get some of their production going. But it may be too little too late. Golda's commander coming in here will be jumping away as soon as anything comes up. There's the jump! Jumping, forcing all the Scorchers right into the Bandits. Nice play there. Unfortunately, though, for, for Ultra Godzilla, they did, or, yeah, Ultra Godzilla, they pulled back the Scorchers at the right time. Like, they were paying attention. That was some good micro on their part. Unfortunately, they lost the Mason, so repair is not going to be an option without retreating these Scorchers. But, still, kept them alive. 
Whether or not they're going to be useful remains to be seen. Steel Blue coming in here with their own ogre. They're fighting against the ogres. Possibly fighting a losing battle, too. I mean, this is still Izzeride gradually pushing in. Because remember, Izzeride does have their their factory right there. So the south side is going to be hard to defend for the western team. And it's turning out to be the case that it, as it is, in fact, rather difficult for the western team to defend against this. So, yeah, the western team... I mean, Ultra Godzilla and his whole none, but they're losing everything gradually. On the other hand, Steel Blue is doing a pretty good job pushing forward on the north side of the map. Because again, Izzeride can't really help defend here. There's more making Ultra Godzilla's life miserable, and at this point, they pushed all the way to Ultra Godzilla's factory. This might actually still be the turning point of the game. Like, Gorda and Izzeride deciding, you know, the south side of the map, that's where they're going to get most of their mileage. And it's a real gamble... I mean, the Minotaur-Ogre combo is managing to do a lot of damage. I'm actually managing to do all the damage in the world. The north side has been completely taken over. Steel Blue also does have builders here. Finally, someone having builders alongside their force. To get their reclaim going on top of it, they can start completely rebuilding, start completely getting their forces going. And the factory, tank factory, that has everything set up. The rover factory does have a couple caretakers, at least. I mean, reclaim is just going to be generally good. There is no reason not to reclaim right now for Steel Blue. Unfortunately, we aren't seeing that reclaim happen for Steel Blue. I really wish we did. How much reclaim is there, actually? No, oh, okay, 200 metal reclaim. It's not... Well, 600 if you expand. But yeah, the easily grab stuff, 300 metal reclaim, it's... I guess it's not the biggest thing in the world. Well, I guess 30 seconds, but... of... plus... of extra plus 10. But yeah, it's not the biggest deal, I suppose, if you don't have that. Especially compared to repair. Like, get that repair going. I like that choice. Get the repair, get the economy up, get the reclaim, get the static economy. I mean, the real challenge is going to be getting rid of Izzerite's commander. We are seeing attacks over from the north side, at least to help out. Fortunately, that Minotaur is having a bit of a tough time. The Ogre coming in to help out, but the Cyclops is already in play. And that is going to be a real challenge to get through. The Cyclops... I mean, that is exactly what you need to do. That's going to help get rid of the Minotaur, no problem. And there's not much that's actually going to stop it. Unfortunately, you'd need to have a lot of light units, which is not what is currently being built. Dominatrices instead are what's being built, which might work okay. But yeah, that's two Minotaurs down for a Cyclops. That's actually not quite totally worth it yet. That's 1,700 metal for 2,200 metal. But the Cyclops is still doing his job. Like, it is still going to be able to tear apart pretty much everything Steel Blue has built up. There's no defense against this. And with the support shields coming in, there's not a whole lot that can be done to stop that Cyclops. More Minotaurs and Ogres are coming in, but the Minotaurs and Ogres are exactly the Cyclops counters. So, no, this Cyclops is in a very good position right now. Steel Blue's commander, basically on the verge of death, does, fortunately for it, have the jump. But even then, it's still just on the back foot. This Cyclops might... I think the Cyclops is just going to give the game over to the Eastern team. That's basically it. Cracks everything open. Makes that north side completely available. Now go to reclaiming everything as they go. And, yeah, the Eastern team is going to have all the money in the world. They don't even have the production capacity to use it all, but, hey, they're taking it. They're getting it away from their opponents. I really am surprised we didn't see more reclaim coming in from Steel Blue when they were, for when they were forward. But this is exactly what I was worried about would happen for Steel Blue and Ultra Godzilla, is that one thing would come up. And we'll just break them completely, which is exactly what's happened. This Cyclops, that Cyclops, most valuable unit this game, this year Cyclops. Although attempts to capture it are ongoing. Might actually work too. That's a lot of dummies. I think it's too late to turn the game around, but it would be at least nice as a moral victory to get that Cyclops captured. And no. No, the dummies are too slow. The Domies have been slowed. Yeah, that slow beam. Very good defense against the Dominatrices, actually. So with that, Gota and Izzerite look to be able to take this pretty handily. And the energy production is being destroyed. It's being systematically dismantled. And while the Cyclops is still alive and still under some risk of capture, the Dominatrices... Nah, they're not going to be able to do much. The Bandits are coming in here. They will destroy the Domies. And that should be it. Although the Dummy's actually doing a pretty good job capping the bandits. No, maybe not. Oh, the welders. That's that's what's going to stop it. The welders coming in here. Stopping the dominatrices. 
They have enough HP that actually is difficult to capture them. So that is a really good choice. Just Mass Welder, which is already here. But yeah, Mass Welder against Dominatrix. Surprisingly countered. That is actually, I mean, it makes a lot of sense because, like, they're fairly, they're fairly common units. They're not too expensive. They have a ton of HP, so they take a while to capture. And they don't have a very strong weapon, but you have enough of them. I mean, a Dominatrix costs two welders. And each welder, you know, it's nine damage per second, but, you know, it's 100 seconds when they're taking, when the Dominatrix take 333 for the capture. That's like five seconds to capture any, or no, that's six seconds to capture one of these. So yeah, it's actually fairly efficient, surprisingly enough. <laughs> Wait, they have more DPS per cost than... Oh, DPS is 45, my bad. That's actually way better than I thought. Do they have more DPS per cost than the Minotaurs? I guess they do. Wow. Yeah, because Minotaurs are 800 and... Yeah, that's actually true. Wow. Because four, four times the DPS would be 180 on the Welders. And Minotaurs don't have that much more HP. So an interesting choice there. But yeah, 45 DPS if you if you got the cost. Yeah, this is Asinan is exactly right. I'd never even thought of it that way. But yes, welders actually have more DPS per cost than minotaurs. The downside with welders is that they don't have a massive amount of burst damage. And also they're doing a bunch of other stuff. Like it's more minotaurs don't fire that frequently. They have 300 they have 640 damage in every shot, they just fire once every four seconds. But yeah, welders are... Welders are tricky that way. I mean, a good counter to Dominatrix, though, just because of the HP per cost. That, that is a huge element of why they're more efficient against Dominatrices. At this point, though, it's... Wait, where's the Cyclops? Where'd the Cyclops go? Did the Cyclops die? Did I miss that? Oh, I feel really weird now. I didn't cap the Cyclops. Oh, they are on the way of capping all these Minotaurs. Maybe. They're trying to cap the Minotaurs. The Dominatrix are trying to cap whatever the heck they can just to turn this around. I don't see that happening. I'm sorry. I mean, you can try. I got a couple welders at least. That's nice. But it's not going to be enough as the bandits come in here. Yeah, there's the bandits getting in the Dominis. Bandits are generally a good choice against Dominatrices. Any kind of light... Any light unit that you have a lot of, the Dominies just have enough of a reload time that they'll capture two or three of them, but it's not going to be enough to stop the army. And that is going to be it. There's there's the game. I actually already have seen Ultra Godzilla thrown, or Ultra Godzilla Steel Blue actually just merging onto one team briefly, but yeah, that's... That is Steel Blue throws in the towel. Ultra Godzilla will probably soon follow. And that should be... That'll be the tournament. That'll be it. That is it. So, Ultra Godzilla and Steel Blue, you get second place, you got second place, and Golda and Izzeride got first place. And that was last week's tournament, or the recap stream thereof. So, I hope you enjoyed that. It was certainly fun to cast. Kind of curious what the stats were on this, though. Metal used. West team did really well for a while, and then stopped. Steel Blue, oh yeah, because they merged into one player. West team started out really well, actually. Metal Lincoln started out strong. I mean, we saw before they were really taking advantage of the fact that the north side of the map was open to them. But unfortunately, the south side of the map wasn't open, and that like, that really put a lot of pressure. And then, of course, once the Cyclops came up, that was it. So that was an interesting play. Like, Israel and Gota basically set up so the south side was totally secure, and then rotated over to the north side because they knew their opponents were entirely focused there. As soon as they broke that, then it was just a matter of sweeping in and wiping out everything else that had been constructed. And that was that. So, good strategy from Golda and Izzeride. And anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And I will see you next time. So, have a good night, everyone.